Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at the Typekit desktop fonts and market assets. These are things that full Creative Cloud members get access to that they can use throughout their design projects, throughout their design work. So um, I get a lot of questions every time I show this, so I'm going to answer some of these questions along the way. So first and foremost, as a full Creative Cloud member, if you were to go up to your Creative Cloud uh, application and then come over to Assets, this is where you will find your files. This is where you get access to your 20 gigs of storage or more or less, depending on your plan. This is also where you will find the Typekit desktop fonts and the market assets. We'll come to this one in a moment. But let's talk about the fonts for a moment. This library, and I lose, I lose track because it just we keep adding to it, but at one point it was at least worth $25,000. In other words, if you were to go out and buy all the fonts available in Typekit Desktop and to buy them from the various founders that they come from, it would cost you that much. Well, this is part of your Creative Cloud membership, and therefore you get access to use these fonts throughout any of your designs, and they're now being integrated directly into the applications so that you don't even have to do it from this menu. So for example, let me show you a couple of ways they work and then we'll talk about what you can and can't do with them. Um, let's go up to our file menu in Photoshop and let's go ahead and open up a recent document. And I know this document's missing a font. Now traditionally, when you're missing a font, Photoshop would just bring up a dialog box and say, hey, you're missing this font, here's the name of it. Let me know when you get this problem fixed and I'll just sit here and wait. But now it's actually giving you the choice of it. First, it will go out and look and see if that font exists on Typekit. And if so, it'll say, hey, I've matched this font. Do you want me to resolve this missing font? Do you want me to go ahead and sync it for you? So if I say resolve fonts, it'll pop up a little menu there. And in a few seconds, it'll pop up the other one, letting me know that it went out and found Magneta Book, synced it to my desktop, installed it, and made it available to Photoshop or any other open Adobe application I had open, and it's ready to go. So that font is no longer missing. Now, we covered a lot just there. So let's talk about a couple of things that I get questions on. First and foremost, imagine the process if it had found the font, and or if it just told you the font, and you had to go find it yourself. You'd have to go to a font website like Adobe or wherever you buy fonts from, find the font, buy the font, download the font, install the font, depending on the application, quit and relaunch the application, and then, and also depending on the font manager, you would have the font installed. Then you'd have to back up that font file so that in case you, you know, your computer crashed, you wouldn't lose the ability to reinstall that font. Well, we just took care of all of that for you. We downloaded the font in the background, installed it in your operating system in a special Creative Cloud area, and that font is not only available in my Adobe applications, Here's one of the questions I get, but yes, you can use it in any application that has a font menu. So if you want to use it in your word processor, if you want to use it in your whatever other application you're using, you can do that. You can use those fonts. And they are, now you might have heard of Typekit back in the day when Typekit was just a web font company. So Typekit makes web fonts, that's what they're known for before we acquired them. And now they also make desktop or we make desktop fonts available as well. So these are printable fonts available for me to use. And that font is there. And let's take a look at what else we can do. So I'm going to click on this Vimes text, the name of the group here. And there's the Magneta book no longer missing. But uh, this is new in Photoshop for 20 CC for 2014. If I bring up the font menu, it shows me the font, but now I can hover over all my fonts and kind of see them quickly in context in Photoshop so that I don't have to worry about highlighting, find, clicking on a font, seeing if I like it, unhighlighting, hiding the highlighting, uh, choosing a different font, so forth and so on. So just a quick perusal of the font menu and I can see which ones I like or which ones I don't like. Now you'll notice at the top there are two T's for Typekit. There is the filter for Typekit and the add fonts from Typekit. What do those do? Well if I just want to see which fonts I already have in, you know, I've already synced then I can just say sync, or I'm sorry, filter, and it will show me just my Typekit desktop fonts that I have installed. Now, syncing to your computer. Because I'm logged into Creative Cloud, it's syncing to this computer, and I have another computer. If I'm logged into that computer, if I open, as soon as I launch that computer or, or start it up or wake it up from sleep, 
these fonts will download and sync to it as well because it's the same Creative Cloud login. And it doesn't matter if it's Mac, Windows, 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 Mac, Mac. I can have this installed on two computers, logged in on both computers, and I, it will sync on both computers. So that's the beauty of um, the syncing is that it's installing it in both places. So when I go home and work on uh, my other laptop, it's already there. The fonts are already there, ready to go. Okay, so let's say that I kind of look through all the list here and I don't like any of these. And I want to um, kind of go and see what my options are. Well, I can say add fonts from Typekit and that'll bring up the Typekit website, which has got access to all of the fonts. And of course, it's going to, um, as it's updated, there'll be more fonts available here. So I, I don't have to worry about downloading a font installer. It's kind of the web and it, the, as the fonts are added, they're just automatically added to this page. Now you notice that it kind of magically brought in the word Vimes. Well, no, I had typed this previously and therefore it's still there. So if I typed photo for Photoshop or just photo, photo would still be there um, until the next time I changed the word. But we are looking for a good Vimes font. And what I can do here is kind of just look through. I can also specify it by classification. If I know the name of a font, I can search Typekit for it. And let's say that I kind of like this font. Now you notice that um, when you hover over font, it brings up a little uh, pop-up. If that pop-up has a little desktop computer on it or screen, that means that that's not just a web font, it's also available as a desktop font. So I'm gonna say, yes, I kind of want to see this one. Let's go ahead, it's a script. Let's go ahead and sync it. And um, it will sync and do its thing behind the scenes. I don't have to tell it to do anything. It'll just do it. Um, so that is the way we would add a new font. And if I kind of like this less script, I can also do this one as well. And this one's already synced, so it said remove if I wanted to get rid of this one. Um, so I can keep going through finding various fonts that I want. I can look at scripts. I can look at serif. I can look at sans serif, so forth and so on. And as I find fonts that I like, if there's a desktop icon and I haven't already synced them previously, I can say sync the selected fonts and it will go ahead and do it. All right, so now that's how we get new fonts into our computer. That's how we get them. So uh, let's head back over to Photoshop. And again, we can go to our uh, font menu and we can uh, play around with the various choices that we have here. But let's say that I am, uh, the question I normally get at this point is, okay, I've designed this, I've used Magneta Book. I'm good, it's synced, what now? What can I or can I do with that font? Obviously you can print it. Obviously you can make a PDF of it. But the question we normally get is can I now package this up and hand it to someone to print? And that's where the answer is no. So, um, and this is, a, this is a licensing restriction, not a technology restriction. We're, we're restricted by the licenses of these fonts to prohibit packaging of them. Also, you're prohibited from adding them or putting them in an application that you're going to distribute. So I can embed them like in a PDF, no problem. I can of course outline them and therefore the font's not required. But if I'm sending this document over to another Creative Cloud member, remember that's really not a problem if they're another full member like my printer would be, my service provider then they're gonna open up this document and it's gonna say missing fonts and they're gonna click sync and they're gonna have the fonts. That's why we're building that resolve missing font technology into the applications as quickly as we can. So that solves the font issue. Now, what about web fonts? We talked about desktop, Typekit does both. So if we pop over to Adobe Muse, for example, and I wanna use a font, different font on my, um, my web design, well, I don't worry about going to Typekit because Muse has the Typekit web fonts and Dreamweaver have them built in. So if I go in and I just say add, uh, web fonts, add web fonts, it will bring up the search here for my web fonts that are available to me for Typekit. So I could scroll through. I'm just going to randomly scroll through until I find one. Um, if it doesn't have a check mark, that means I haven't used it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and check this one. Click OK. And that font has already been added to the menu. So now if I say, uh, let's go find Paris Parisian. Uh, I can go ahead and say, find Parisian. We can make it larger. 
not that large, maybe about that large. And there it is. I just found a nice script font. Now, of course, the difference is in print, I'm, I'm controlling the whole process from design to the actual output. But on the web, I can't control what people have on their computers. So I don't know, you probably don't have Parisian on your computer viewing my website. But if I go up to my file menu and I say preview this page in the browser, it only installed that font in Muse as a web font. So Chrome, which is my default browser, knows nothing about that font. But there it is. Here it is as text. So how does Chrome see that font? Well, when it built the HTML for this page, it built one line of code for all the Typekit fonts that said, hey, if there's a Typekit font on this page, go grab it from the Typekit server and serve it up to that user. No matter where your site's hosted, no matter whether you're, you, know, you remain a Creative Cloud member or not. So that font is permanently embedded in this particular page as a Typekit web font for it to go out, find the font, show it to the user, no matter where the user is viewing this from and no matter what device they're using to view this. They're going to see that font that I chose. Okay, so that's the font aspect of it. Okay, so now let's head back to Photoshop. When I get back to Photoshop, what I'd love to do is add a graphic to this uh, design. And I'm going to go ahead and just add a, let's go up to the top here. We're going to add a new layer. And we're going to call this layer simply graphic. All right, so now that we've got our graphic layer, now we're just waiting to get the graphic. And I don't have the graphic I want to use. I, I don't have the artwork. So let's go find artwork. Let's go back up to the Creative Cloud menu. Let's go down over to the market. And on the market, I've got the various um, most frequently used or seen or newly added. But what I want to do is simply search. Since this is a musician or a music band, I want to search for music to see what I can find that's music related. And of course, that will show me the various uh, music notes and devices and music related things that have been added to the market assets mixers sliders all kinds of cool things and looking at these guys and especially the old school tape deck here these guys are pretty old school so let me find something that's a little bit more old school to use here um i could you know we don't have a drummer yeah let's go ahead and add the drumsticks so i'm gonna go ahead and say uh, that i want to download and sync this I can choose which of my Creative Cloud libraries to sync it to. And of course, I can even create a new library if I didn't have one already. But I'm going to go ahead and say create it or sync it to my Adobe Demos library. Once I do that, behind the scenes, it will do the syncing. I just saw the uh, icon there. Uh, I should get a notification that it's synced. And there's my notification. And in a moment, it should appear in my graphics library. And there it is, it just appeared. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it onto my new layer as a smart object. So there it is, it comes in. I can of course do whatever I wanna do with this. So I can grab free transform. I could scale it down. I can rotate it. I can uh, kind of put this anywhere I want. Maybe even make it part of the Vimes logo. Take off the uh, V there and uh, convert the V into the drumstick. So we'll go ahead and apply that for now. And let's go to our uh, Vimes text and we'll just take off the letter V. And oops, maybe not that much. And actually, that looks pretty good. We're good. Now we can, of course, um, arrange this any way we want. Let's see, actually that went on to a new layer, so we don't need ours anymore. There we go. And we'll call this drumsticks. So now we have the drumstick layer. And again, we can move this around, scale it, do whatever we want to make that part of our design. So just that easily and quickly, I was able to grab something from the market assets, uh, search, find what I want, sync it down to my Creative Cloud folder, as well as put it in my selected library. Now that it's in my library, I can drag that element into other designs, whether I'm in Photoshop in the Libraries panel, Illustrator in the Libraries panel, or any other application that we add a Libraries panel to. And um, if I share that library, 
with another Creative Cloud member, they will have access to the same assets that I've designed or I've downloaded or synced uh, so that they can use them as well. Maybe I'm just kind of creating a logos um, library or a icons library. And I grab a, thing, a bunch of things I like and I share them with my designer or, or with um, the colleagues I'm working with. And they can go at it. So there you have it. Typekit desktop fonts, Typekit web fonts, restrictions and benefits to both, as well as the market assets. Now, once again, these are royalty free for you to use in any of your designs. What you can't do is some, you can't repackage them and resell them. So you can sell your design, obviously, but you can't say, hey, here's a website to go download a set of drumsticks because then that would violate the license agreement because now you would then be redistributing the artwork. Same thing with the fonts. Even if you could access the fonts, can't redistribute them. You can put them in your designs, print them, use them, but not resell them as assets for others to use. So with that said, that's a quick look at Typekit fonts market assets for my full Creative Cloud members, team members, and people that have access to uh, all of the applications and therefore all the services. Take care and we'll catch you on the next one.